Hey guys, what's up and welcome back uh, for another ANSYS uh, video tutorial. And uh, today I'm going to be going over with you uh, how to use a contact in ANSYS Workbench as well as how to use the pretension method uh, for, uh, let's say, for bolts, for example. So today we're going to be going over a simple example that I made, which is basically a bracket with uh, supposed to be bolt here. That's just I did very simply out of two cylinders and a nut here, which I just did again out of one, one object. So it's a very simple example, but it's just really just to get you guys uh, just to know how to use contact and how to use the pretension method. So this is a perfect example. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to want to um, download the file for the, uh, the geometry. I'm not going to go over how to make the geometry file because it took a little bit of time. So I'm just going to add it into the description. So you can go ahead and download that right now. And then once you have that downloaded, open Workbench and then drop in a, a static structural. And here we're going to call it um, Bolt Pretension and Contact Tutorial. And then once you have that, you want to probably go ahead and save your project. And so before we uh, load in the geometry, uh, for this example, I'm just going to be using structural steel. So if you want to change the geometry for your bolt or your nut, you can go ahead and do that here. And if you want to know a bit more how to do that, uh, I have another video tutorial which shows you, which I'll probably add to the link somewhere as well. So I'm just going to be using steel for all the components. So once you have that, you're going to want to go ahead and right click on your geometry and import the geometry using the browse function. So you're going to want to locate your downloaded uh, geometry.agdb file. I already have it here in my history, so that's why it shows up here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and double click. And then that's going to load up Design Modeler. So here we have the geometry file once again. I just want to show it to you. It's the plate, bolt, and nut. And uh, if you don't like this ghosting effect here, you can go ahead and hit view and unclick on frozen body transparency. It's because when I built the model, uh, ANSYS always, when you want to add separate objects that are close together, uh, if you don't want them to be merged, you want to add them as frozen. So that way um, it, 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 it actually adds it as another part. So, so here we have the three parts. So that's our uh, exercise for today. Then once you have that done, we're going to go ahead and double click on model. So that's going to start here mechanical. So once mechanical is loaded, um, we're, we should see our geometry file again here. And uh, there we have it. So the geometry is imported, the plate, the bolt, the nut. Coordinate systems we're not going to touch. Contacts, so this is, this is where we want to, is what we want to talk about. Um, ANSYS automatically creates uh, connections. If it detects certain two bodies that are actually close enough, it actually auto-generates uh, contact, uh, contact uh, constraints on, on, the, on the body. So these are actually not bad. Um, you know, so in most cases, they actually do a fairly good job. But because I'm doing a tutorial, I actually want to go in and show you how to do them. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, click on the first one, the last one, holding shift, right click, and then delete all of these. So, and I'm also going to uncheck generate on refresh, just in case you change something in your geometry. I don't want it to always refresh the, these automatic contacts. So once you have that, I'm going to right click on contact. Uh, insert and I'm going to create a contact region. So the first region I'm going to create is going to be between uh, the bolt and the plate. So I'm going to click on the bolt using the face selector, click on the no selection, hit apply, and then that will select this surface. Next I'm going to click on the bolt, right click, hide the body, and then with the, with the face selector again I'm going to collect the inside of this and then the inside of this, of this plate. And then with holding the shift key, sorry, uh, in between selections to select both of them, and then I'm going to click here for those two faces. Then I'm going to right click, show all bodies. So there we have our first contact. And then we're going to change this actually to frictional, but I'm going to do that afterwards um, because I don't want them, I don't want it to be bonded. I actually want it to be able to slide. So I'm going to change that in a minute. I'm just going to finish setting up all my contacts. I'll show you why later, why it's faster. So I'm going to click another manual contact region, choose this one here, choose that as the contact. And then I'm going to hide this body, and then I'm going to select this face, and hit Apply. And then right-click, and then Show All. So there's our next contact region. And then I'm going to create another one here, and then this face, and then Apply, and then I'm going to hide it. And then I'm going to choose this face, and then Apply. 
and then that's it. And we have that, and then finally we have the connection between the bolt and the nut. So that one is going to be um, going to hide. Uh, actually, I don't need to hide. I can select this, hit apply, and then hide the bolt, and then click on this face, and then hit apply. So that's the bolt to nut, and then I'm going to show all bodies again. So what I want is I want this one, which was the, 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 this surface to the plate to be frictional. I want these two surfaces to be frictional. And I want these two surfaces to be frictional. And the last one I want to be bonded to simulate the bolt and the nut. So as if the nut is locked with the bolt. So I'm going to select this, hold control, select the second one and the third one. And then here I'm going to change the type. Instead of bonded, I'm going to put frictional. And then I'm going to use 0.2 as a friction coefficient which is somewhat standard I guess between uh, two steel bodies and then I'm going to select the behavior to uh, symmetric I'm not going to go into the details of why but we're just going to maybe in a more advanced tutorial I could so we're going to use symmetric and then for the bonded contact we're going to have bonded and then for the behavior we're going to choose symmetric again so there you go that's how you set up your constraints for this problem so once we have that, we're going to go ahead and generate a quick mesh by selecting mesh and right-clicking and generate, or you can click on update here. And I don't really like the mesh so much, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some, some refinements. So I'm going to choose the method for this one, uh, select the body using the body selector, and then hitting apply, and then changing the method to a multi-zone. And then I'm going to go ahead and generate. So that looks a lot better already. And then for the, uh, I'm going to choose another method for the plate, and then I'm going to choose a hex dominant because I don't want to have triangles because they usually it's a, it's a lower quality um, mesh. It uses more elements for the same for the in the same space. And here it's a nicely it's a nice bracket, so we can easily use a hex dominant mesh here. But we can see here that the elements are a bit too big. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually insert a sizing, and then we're going to we're going to actually sorry not do a body sizing. We're going to do a global size. So click on the mesh, click on sizing, and then in element size we're going to hit 4. So we're going to make everything 4 millimeters and we're going to generate. So that's already a lot better. So now that, that, that refines this, refines the bracket. So what's left is this nut here which is uh, not really so uniform. So I'm going to go ahead and use a map face meshing which will basically make it a bit more uniform on the surface. But now the element quality is not so high, so I'm going to go ahead and insert a sizing, and then apply, and then use an element size of 3. And then we'll go ahead and generate. So there we go, now we have two elements across the bolt, a few more across this way, so that's a very nice mesh right now. So once you have the mesh, we're going to go ahead and go to the static structural, and we're going to go ahead and insert a fixed support to add a boundary condition here. So we're going to make the bottom of this bracket not moving. And then we're going to go ahead and insert the bolt pretension, which is right here. Now the bolt pretension works by usually selecting the surface of the bolt. Uh, so we're going to click on this surface here, and then we're going to hit apply. So now you can see these two arrows pointing to each other, which means that it's going to slice the body of this bolt here and move the elements in together to create the pretension on the ends that you want. If you want to change the origin of where ANSYS slices the elements, you could do that with a coordinate system, but uh, by changing the coordinate system of the bolt pretension, but I'm going to do that maybe in another tutorial if you guys really want to know how to do that. So for now what it does is it actually, the, the origin here is in between the uh, this the middle of the, of the surface, so from here to here it finds the middle, and then that's where it will slice and, and do the bolt, the, the pretension. So that's the bolt pretension. Now in the defined by we have either load or adjustment. We're not going to talk about open, but load or adjustment. So I'm going to actually use load will be in newtons or adjustment if you know the millimeters. So we're going to use 0.3 millimeters in this example. So there we have the adjustment and then we're going to go ahead and insert uh, in the solution. We're going to insert um, total, uh, total deformation and then we're going to also insert the total stress just to see the results. So once you have that done, we're going to go ahead and hit solve. And then I already solved this problem, so I'm not going to go into it, but here it is solved. So as you can see in the solution information, if you want, you can hit one second to, to see the refresh a little bit faster. And you can go ahead and change the output to force convergence, and then you'll see how long it takes. Once this uh, purple line passes below the blue line, 
then your 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 force uh, reached the the cr the criteria on the solution conversion. The reason why you have this table is because the connections are nonlinear, so so the the frictional co the frictional connections that you created are uh, cause the problem to be nonlinear. So that's why you have a convergence plot now. So if you go into the stress results, you can see here that there's 500 megapascals of stress, and the maximum is located in the corner of the bracket. And, uh, and basically the total deformation is at the top of this bracket and you can go ahead and probe the deformation around here and you can see that's about 0.1 millimeters, you know, 0.1 here as well. Somewhere here it's about 0.14, so you didn't get the 0.3 that we applied, that's due to the, uh, the rigidity uh, the, of, of, this, of this bracket which is inhibiting the, the, the total um, the total pretension on the thing, so it's adding the resistance. So that's why you also have stress in the bolt as well. So there you have it. That's a quick tutorial on it. And then we can go ahead and use the contact tool and then choose, let's say, this face using the face selector here. Hit apply and then gonna go ahead and evaluate the, the results. And this is just to see what's going on with your contacts. You can see here that you have some sticking and you have some sliding in this area. So it's showing you that the frictional contact is actually working. So this, these parts, these elements are almost stuck. They're not even moving and you have some sliding area. So it's not bonded. So if you were to go ahead and actually look at the contact of the bonded area that we had here. So if we, let's say, hide this and we, oh no, sorry, if we show this hide this, select this area, apply, evaluate. You can see here that it's all sticking. So there's nothing moving mm -hmm. here, so that's completely bonded. So, so we know that this is working well uh, also. And if you want to, let's say, see the, you know, the, the frictional stress, you can go ahead and add that. And you can see the stress caused by the friction of, of the contact as well. So there's the contact tool. If you want to do something a little bit more advanced, you can stay with me and I'll show you how to do a two-step bolt pretension method. So what you could do is, let's say you wanted to uh, pretension the bolt and then add a force to your model. So what you would do is you go into the analysis settings, change the number of steps to two, then you would go into the bolt pretension, then you have two steps loaded here. And what you would want to do is you do the adjustment in the first step, and in the second step you would want to click here and you want to click lock. So that's going to hold the uh, that's going to hold the point three for the next step. So now it's going to be locked at point three this element, and then here you can apply your force. You can insert a force, and you can let's say insert on this face, and you can use let's say components, and then here in the table what you're going to do is in the second step you're going to add let's say ten thousand newtons to the second step, which will be ten thousand newtons this way applying a force this way after the, the pretension is applied. Now if you solve that, you get this here, which I already solved for you guys here. And so now here you can see the animation. And so here we have it pretension and then open. Pretension and then it pushes a little bit because that's due again to the, to the second step. Versus here what we had was the first step, which I can show you the animation, just the pretension. But I just changed it now to two, to two steps, so that's why it went blank for a second. But anyway, you have just the pretension in that, so that's for the zero to one, and then from one to two, you have the force that's being applied. If you want to change it, have a little bit better video animation. You can put 20 frames. You can see that right there. So you can go ahead and check out the stress, and the stress, the stress changes the maximum stress of the whole body from 500 to 574 at the second step. But what we can do is we can go and actually really see what the stress is. Uh, let's say the equivalent stress in this corner, if we're curious. And then we can right click and duplicate that. And then for this one, we can put the time, we can put one. And then here we can put two. And we can go ahead and evaluate. You can see here that at, after the pretension, it's 490. And then after the force, that alleviates a bit of the stress, so then it drops to 371. So which makes sense. And you can also, let's say, see the stress on the face of the bolt. And then we can duplicate that as well. And then we can have this one at time one. And then this one at time two. 
and then you can evaluate those results and then so at time one you have 321 with the max stress here and then after the force is applied on this bracket you have a force of 387 here so which is increases which also makes sense so anyway that's a quick tutorial on how to do uh, the bolt pretension and how to apply uh, connections to your uh, to your to your uh, model so if you guys liked it uh, please uh, you know subscribe and like the video it, it helps me you know make more videos and also if you have any questions or comments uh, please leave them in the in the comments below and uh, I'll be happy to answer them and if you have a maybe you know if you guys want another tutorial on something more specific that you want to see that I didn't show here please let me know in the comments section so anyway thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you again soon